they are and you know the thing that um that i was just thinking about was that that connection and and you mentioned that nathan the connection between the stress and anxiety that you're feeling and the relief those quite quickly become so for me became so entangled that um the stress or anxiety would come on and that was almost immediately immediately linked with an urge so like a pavlovian response it it, it was and um you know i can i can i can give a like a truly pavlovian example of that 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 um not to fast forward too far but in in you know within the first week of of coming off of opiates and detoxing having such a feeling of of anxiety and you know the walls were caving in on my world and had to face work had to face my family and loved ones and getting the taste and there's a there's a specific taste um, that occurs in in your mouth and for anyone who's experienced um, injectable opiates it's a it's a bitter nasty almost indescribable taste and i remember being at home within a week of, of coming off of them having an anxiety attack in my bedroom and thinking oh my god i can taste it and and you know that to me was such a such a glaring example of the brain making that link between that feeling of stress that feeling of anxiety and the relief and my brain was already telling me cueing me towards the relief when it was unavailable when i wasn't even in that setting anymore so right. that was, you know that's a striking sort of again kind of a pavlovian example of that yeah that's uh that's amazing how the the mind just demands when you know when you're in that situation and so in that case where you don't have access to any more hydromorph you're basically on a one-way street uh, heading straight towards uh anxiety attack and and you know there's nothing for that other than to weather the storm or get more hydromorph you know that's right and and when i was at work it very quickly came to be that um there I, I wouldn't get to the point of an anxiety attack but i would have this sort of uh rumbling low rumbling anxiety right uh and in terms of mental cues and i remember i remember driving to work and this was after some time of, of using opiates and by the time i would be driving to work i would start to develop a stress a feeling of stress a strange feeling of anxiety within my body and then also that that taste again and i can remember the taste i think i will go to my grave knowing knowing what that taste is and as i've learned skills i no longer have that connection if i have an anxiety attack or if i if i'm feeling stressed i don't taste it but mm. um but it's a strong memory for me well yeah that's uh that's an interesting one to monitor and i wonder you're not uh you're not back to work as a nurse right now and i'm not 100 percent sure from talking to you if if you are going to return um but i wonder you know the uh with what research has shown as to um the effects of your environment on those type of cues you know say you walk back into your ward right now in you know just today and just walk back in there i wonder what would happen as far as you know would that would that taste just come right back just from being in that environment yeah it's a great question i i wonder that as well and and um you know i have done some exposure therapy in term in my treatment and um and it didn't initially i i never because of the pandemic i didn't get inside and go back into the department but got pretty darn close um with support with you know with support and having learned some of the skills that i've learned <clears throat> and it and so it didn't but uh, uh any kind of a hospital or clinical setting it's such a sensory experience there's uh the sounds of the alarms the smell of the cleaner the smell of body fluids um the smell of hand sanitizer um the sound of kind of the chaos and the bustle and and i think that very rapidly the brain kind of enmeshes um those those sensory experiences with that feeling of stress and anxiety that you might have felt during traumatic situations and then 
the relief and how to get you out of it. Yeah, absolutely. And from my experience, there's, I believe that for the rest of my life, there will be a portion of my subconscious that is constantly working towards that end. So there's, there's a part of me that doesn't care about long-term consequences or anything else really. It just wants to get back to that drug. So if it can use an environment like that with all those cues to its advantage, then it would, it will try to get you back in there fast. It will try to get you back in there when you're not prepared. Um, because it wants a higher percentage chance to get you back in into your addiction, right? Yeah, that's right. 